This is Mike Natal with Jesus' Life Ministries, um, a ministry that the Lord really brought into my heart um, about two years ago, and He has really br brought it to fruition. Um, and what we stand for is build, re restore, build, and multiply. That we want to restore back the passion uh, that was lost for the gospel to build up leaders and to continue to multiply people that are on fire for God and that, were, that are willing and, and desire to share the gospel for those who need, to, need it the most. Um, and that's what we stand for. And I want, I want you to know a little bit about me, a little bit about my story, um, where God has brought me and what he's done in my life and the amazing uh, gift that he's given me and that he's offering to you of the gospel of salvation, um, the gospel of Christ. And really this is a story of how God has the power to change an atheist to a believer um, and to someone that really um, would do anything for Christ now. Um, and I want to start from the beginning. Um, so really long story short, um, I came from a family that really was divided by religion. Um, in my mom's side, um, there was many pastors, uh, they were Pentecostal and, and they really did believe in the Lord. Um, my dad's side, they were more Roman Catholic, more traditionally based, and they also more believed in um, more more of a Roman Catholicism mixed with um, really just Spanish witchcraft in a way. So it's really different perspective, different, different spectrums, and um, both my parents uh, worked a lot, and um, other than that, they drank quite a lot too. Um, so that's, that's really where um, my journey started, where in my mom's side of the family, they were more religious, but they never, never practiced what they really preached. And then there was my dad's side that was very traditional, but then it was very cultish and very strange. So I was very, just wanted to be isolated from both those perspectives. My family was not, didn't subscribe to really either of them, except for more the cultish area um, and that's really what I grew up with seeing I grew up really my family doing weird ritualistic things that really got me weirded out and strange by it um, and really kind of like just want you know really detached myself from it um, so most of the time I spend with my my grandparents it's because my parents really worked a lot because they really you know we I was born and raised in Puerto Rico so all this was there um, this is where I lived and um, during that time you know they really worked hard to to allow us to have what we have um, so there were two jobs and I stayed with my grandparents and my mom's side um, so my grandfather was really uh, my mom's my mom's dad was really more of a mentor and a dad to me than anybody else um, and he really was the only one that I feel like really got me and understood me um, and um, he really was on the fence with the whole religion thing. But then he actually started following Christ. Um, and right when he started following Jesus, he actually got diagnosed with cancer. Um, and when we got diagnosed with cancer, it was really hard for our family, and especially hard for me, uh, seeing someone that really um, supported me and was there for me and really, um, really was the only thing that I could really depend on my idol, honestly, in that point. Um, who I wanted to be like, really slowly die. Um, and that was the hardest thing in my life. And when he passed away, I think, you know, a lot of my heart and who I was really died with him. Um, so um, during that time of my life, I would say a couple months after that, we moved to the United States. And when we moved to the United States, really everything changed. Um, I lost my friends. I'm coming to a country that I didn't know the language to, very isolated from um, really what everything was like. And, you know, fast forwarding to that, me trying to adjust to this, you know, I was very much bullied in, in school. I, I wasn't the, the fittest kid. I was pretty pretty big and tiny. Um, so I got really big, bullied uh, most of the time. And um, it wasn't uh, till I decided to want to stand up to myself when I was in high school and start lifting. and. And taking care of myself that I you know got into drugs and going going out with friends and partying and doing all these things that initially just separated me farther and farther away from 
really what my grandfather even was. Um, and it brought me to the mindset that, well, who cares? There is no God. It doesn't matter. If there really was a God, why did my grandfather die? You know, and it gets into this question. We all have that question in our minds. If God's so good, why do these bad things happen? My grandfather wanted to follow, and go, follow God, and then he gets cancer and dies. You know, and this, this question took me away from God. I was like, there's, there's no such thing as a God like that. I, I, I don't want to believe it. If there is, I don't want to believe in this God. So I live my life like that wasn't the case. Like there was no God. Like I did not believe. I, I, I chose evolution. I chose what was logical in my own eyes in that, in that sense. And that's why I then proceeded to go after um, the healthcare field and, and biology because, again, that's where my brain was, um, was set. Um, but... You know, it wasn't until my parents actually came to know the Lord. They, they changed from people that used to, you know, be heavy smokers and drinkers. And really just, we didn't really have a great relationship, me and my parents, because of all, the, all, all that had happened. Um, and it wasn't until the Lord draw them, drew them to himself that, that they really started going to church and they... They gave their life to Jesus that they tra radically changed and they transformed them. I'm looking at their life and I'm like, what is happening? Like, you guys can be normal now. Like, it's not Sunday. But they, they started changing and I'm like, what is happening? Um, I, like, this isn't a show. And it wasn't, like, if it wasn't for their example and God transforming them, I wouldn't have gotten curious and, and tried to, to, to figure out why this is happening. And, um, Praise God that he sent someone when I was going to school. I remember um, it was my last year of school, senior year of high school, and I was about to get to college. And this guy came up to me when I was walking in the street, and he said, can I, can I just like rap about Jesus? Like, do you want to hear rap about Jesus? And I, and I was like, what? Sure. I was like, Okay, yeah, well, why not? I was kind of weirded out. I was like, this guy, random guy just wants to rap about Jesus, like, sure. Um, and I can't tell you to this day what the rap was really, if it was good or not, don't know. But he challenged me at the end of, of the rap to, to really read the Bible and, and to find out if this God is really true and real. And, and he, it really convicted me. What he said, he, you know, what he said really stuck to me. And I was like, yeah. Like, I'll do it. Um, and I honestly, I forgot about it. I didn't really, I just said it to say it. But it wasn't until I started reading some of the pamphlets that he gave me um, that I started really understanding who Jesus was and what he did and who he was and how he was betrayed. Just like I've been betrayed by friends. Just like I've been rejected. Just like, you know, even my own family had rejected me before. I, I, I understood and I, I related to him. And I, I was like, wow, like, like, I understand what he's went through. And not only that, but then he gives his life, and then I find out that he gave his life for me, right? And then it answered all these questions that I was like, that I was asking myself, well, if there's a good God, like, why is he allowing evil to happen? And, and it answers those questions perfectly because all those questions were answered through Christ. And they were answered because, you know, the Bible teaches that we've all sinned and we fall short of God's glory, that we're not perfect. And this world was made for perfection, and because of sin, it got completely corrupted. So then God, in all justice and love and mercy, but also being a just judge, he can't just, he can't just legally forgive us if we just get on our knees and say, hey, I'm really sorry. But there had to be a price for our sin. Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death. And that's not talking about physical death, we're talking about spiritual death. So the separation from God. And, it's, and the Bible says in Isaiah 59 that our sin separates us from God. So it's very interesting that if we're separated from God from sin and we're filled with sin, then really the problem is us. So then for God to legally still be just and love us and completely forgive us, there needed to be a price to be paid. And that price to be paid was Jesus. He came fully man, fully God, and he won and he died on the cross, and he bore our sin, and he died, and he was raised to life. And that's the good news, that he died the death that you deserve to die, 
to give you the life that you do not deserve at all. And that's like the amazing news of the gospel, that he paid the price. And now that he resurrected, that he is alive, now we can have life if we put our trust and repent from our sin. And that's the gospel, and that's what changed my whole life. That, yes, I was living all this life that was just for me and for my pleasures, and I didn't want anything to do with God, but I knew that after I partied, after I did all these things that I wanted to do, I would sit in my bed and I would feel empty because I needed something. And I try to fill that with so many things. How many friends I had, how many drugs I had in my system, how many women I, I, I had or, or I did things with, but, and all that stuff didn't really matter. All that stuff still left me empty at the end of the day. And it wasn't until I really saw who Christ was and, and, and truly repented and said, you know what, I, I've been trying to live this life on my own, and this really hasn't worked. It really, I'm still empty. God, I need you. I, I want to turn away from this life, and I want to follow you. And once I made him Lord of my life, I said, Lord, like, I want you to be Lord. I want you to be, you know, I want you to be like the sun, and I want to be like the earth. I want to revolve around you, and you be the only reason why I live. And once I did that and truly left what I had and truly followed him, you know, he gave me this life that I have now. And he changed me. He transformed me. I didn't want to change. It wasn't something I wanted to do. But it was something that he did in my life. He gave me this Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit that's given after you put your trust in Jesus completely transforms your life. And I have God, Jesus, living in my heart right now. And he completely changed me and transformed me. And this is something that you can have as a free gift. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says the same thing, that for by grace you've been saved and is a free gift of God. It's a free gift. It's nothing you can work for. It's not something that you can earn, but it's a gift. And God offers this gift of salvation to everyone who truly repents and believes in Him and is offered to all men. So I encourage you, be encouraged that there is good news in the midst of all brokenness, that Jesus is on the throne and he died and he gave his life so you can have life. So my, you know, my desire and my heart is that you know him, that you get to understand how much he loves you and he desires you. And I pray that this was a blessing for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.